Welcome to the StatsCast. In this StatsCast we look at regression. Regression is a way of exploring the linear relationship between two quantitative variables. Correlation tells us the strength and the direction of the linear relationship, but regression tells us exactly what that relationship is. Our first example comes from a study of Heather in the Tongariro National Park in New Zealand. And here's the scatter plot which graphically shows us that relationship between those two quantitative variables. Here the stem age is our explanatory or our x variable, and the stem length is our y or our response variable, both are quantitative. The scatter plot shows a positive linear rela relationship as the line goes up as we go from left to right. It's approximately linear, this line doesn't look out of place, but the relationship's not that strong because the points are quite scattered around this line. In fact, the screenshot tells us the value of the r squared. If we know the value of r squared is 0.196, we can work out that the correlation coefficient must be the square root of this value, which is about 0.443. So the correlation coefficient tells us that the relationship is reasonable but not that strong. But what is the relationship? And that's what the regression line tells us. The output also gives us the equation of that regression line y hat is equal to 382.8 plus 30.87 times x. But what does this mean? The slope is the most useful bit. The slope here is 30.87. This tells us how much the stem length or the y value will change when the x variable stem age increases by 1. So in this example, for each extra year that the age of the heather increases. The length of the stems will increase on average by about 30.87 millimetres. So that's what the relationship happens to be. A second example comes from a study of the relationship between sugar consum consumption a number, and the number of decayed, missing and filled teeth in various non-industrialised countries. The number of decayed, missing and filled teeth is commonly called the DMFT. Here's a scatter plot of the data, and once again we see a positive relationship. Um, once again, the relationship is not all that strong. In fact, we can find from these data that the correlation coefficient is 0.242. So again, the correlation tells us there's a positive, approximately linear relationship, but it's not all that strong. But again, what is that relationship between these two quantitative variables? Here we can see that the sugar consumption is our explanatory or our x and the DMFT is our response, or our Y. Well, the regression, regression equation information we can summarise in this table. But what does the information tell us? Well, one of the first things we can do is use this information about the regression coefficients to write down what the regression equation is. Y hat will be 1.165 plus 0.047 times X x is the value of the explanatory variable, in this case the sugar consumption, and the y is the value of our response, in this case the number of decayed, missing and filled teeth at age 12. So we have our regression equation, but what does it mean? Once again, the thing that's of most interest is the slope. The slope is 0.047. So this tells us that as the value of x goes up by 1, how much the number of decayed and missing filled teeth will go up. So in this case, as the sugar consumption increases by an average of 1 kilogram per person per year, the number of decayed, missing and filled teeth, on average, will increase by 0 0.047. We also see here about the slope that the p-value is 0 0.0000, in other words, zero to four decimal places, and that's really small. So this means that the sample evidence points towards a relationship between those variables in the population. That is, the evidence suggests a relationship does exist between the sugar consumption and the number of missing, decayed and filled teeth at age 12, on average. 